When I first got the iPad Air 4, I thought it was amazing. But now, after a year of use and with four newer iPads released, is this still an iPad that you should consider buying or is it too late and you're better off choosing something else? The first thing that had me excited about the iPad Air 4 was the redesign. I don't know if you remember, but the iPad Air 3 still looked like the regular iPad with the larger bezels at the top and the bottom with the older style home button. With the iPad Air 4, Apple brought the more modern design of the iPad Pro down to a more affordable model. So if you don't need all the benefits of the 11 inch iPad Pro, for example, you don't need to upgrade just to get the smaller bezels, the rounded corners, and the squared off edges. And I also love how this design maximizes display size without increasing the footprint. I group iPads into three categories, small, medium, and large. Small is the iPad mini, large is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and medium includes the iPad 9, the iPad Air 4, and the 11 inch iPad Pro. All three of them have approximately the same footprint, and I find that that's the size that I end up reaching for most often. Now sure, there are times when the larger display on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is really nice to have, and it's great for watching movies, and I love the larger canvas when I'm using the Apple Pencil, or when I'm using apps in Split View. But it's a noticeably larger and heavier tablet which means that I'm giving up some on portability. On the other hand, when I want the most portable option, then I grab the iPad mini 6, which I absolutely love for mobile gaming. But for most of what I do, the iPad Air 4 strikes a nice balance of size and portability. Now, this was also the first implementation of the new Touch ID, which is incorporated into the power button. And with new features, you never know how they're gonna work until you actually get to use them for a while. And I've had no issues with this new Touch ID over the past year. Just remember to register both your index fingers and you should be able to quickly authenticate in landscape and portability portrait modes. I'm also super happy that Apple included this type of power button on the newer iPad mini 6 because again, we're getting smaller bezels and a larger display in a smaller footprint. It would have been cool if we had Face ID on the iPad Air 4 and it's always nice to have options, but I understand that Apple needs to differentiate between the different iPad models. Now another upgrade to the iPad Air 4, which has been great, is switching from Lightning to USB-C because it's a much more powerful port and I've been able to connect external SSDs without having to worry about power. With the iPad 8, for example, I ran into issues where most of the SSDs that I tried to use just weren't getting enough power. And that's even with the dongle plugged into another the lightning cable. But with the iPad Air 4, I can just connect the SSD directly. I don't need to provide any type of power and it immediately worked. Now with the recent upgrade to LumaFusion, I've also been able to edit videos directly off of an external SSD without needing to transfer those files over to the iPad. This is only available on iPads that have a USB-C port and it's an amazing feature because you no longer have to worry about those video clips filling up your internal storage. I always felt like no matter how much storage I got on the iPad, I would run out and now I can get much more affordable external storage and then still have portable access. Now later on in this video, I'm gonna go over my current storage situation and then what I recommend getting now that I've had a year's worth of use and app downloads. The display was also upgraded from the iPad Air 3, like both in size and in type. So instead of a 10.5 inch retina display, we now have a larger 10.9 inch liquid retina display with a higher resolution of 2360 by 1640 and 500 nits max brightness. I've been super happy with it. It's fully laminated, meaning that the display, the touch layer, and the cover glass are fused into a single piece of display assembly. And that makes the image appear like it's right on top of the glass. At this point, there's only one iPad that isn't fully laminated, and that's the iPad 9, where you're gonna see an air gap and the image appears to be under a sheet of glass. Now, for the majority of what you're gonna do, you're unlikely to see a difference. And over the past year, when I've had to pick an iPad to use for surfing the web, for watching content, Content for gaming or any of the productivity apps that I use, laminated versus non-laminated hasn't been a deciding factor. They both look great. Now, I will say that if you use the Apple Pencil, then with a non-laminated display like the iPad 9, you will be able to see the separation between the tip of the pencil and the content that's being created. On the iPad Air 4, the tip of the pencil will look like it's touching the content. For most of what I do, which is taking notes, some very light drawing, and then marking up and signing documents, this doesn't really matter. But if you're a serious artist, you're going to like using the Apple Pencil better on a fully laminated display. 
Now, speaking of that, I wanna make sure that I mention how much better I like the second generation Apple Pencil. The feel when you're actually touching the display is the same, but it's more comfortable to hold because of the flat edge. It has the added double tap functionality and it has been so much more convenient to have it stored and charged on the side of the iPad Air 4. The Bluetooth pairing is also nice, but it's something that I've only had to do once, so it's only a slight advantage over having to plug the first generation Apple Pencil into the lightning port on the iPad 9. But the fact that I don't have to charge it that way and it's always ready to go because it's essentially always charging when I'm storing it, that has been really nice. Now the battery life has been pretty good on this iPad, but I've had a lot of requests for more detailed battery comparisons. So I recently filmed one and the results really surprised me. I'm currently working on the edit and I'll put a link to that video as soon as it's ready. Now, as far as the accessories that I've used most over the past year, here are a few of my favorites. Now, personally, I couldn't go without a keyboard case because I type too much on my iPad. So whether you want the Magic Keyboard or something like the Logitech Folio Touch, just make sure that you get a keyboard that's comfortable to type on and that protects your iPad Air 4. I already mentioned the second generation Apple Pencil, which keeps being one of the accessories that I underrated the most. Like I really didn't think that I would use it and I end up using it all the time. I also now added the AirPods 3 to the list and I'm still using the Padfolio a ton. So if you wanna see a complete list of all my favorite accessories, I'll link to that video at the end of this one. Now, something else that I do all the time with my iPad Air 4 is Sidecar. And I think it's a massively underrated feature. It lets me use the iPad as an additional display for my Macs and MacBooks. So if I'm traveling or if I just wanna get out of the house and do some research for a video, I can take my MacBook and then have a dual display set up with me anywhere I go. And if I'm at home, I can do the same thing with my Mac mini or my iMac, and it's always so convenient to have an extra display. I can put a reference document or an article on it while I'm typing up bullet points, or if I'm just relaxing, then I can go ahead and play a YouTube video while I'm playing a game. So it's a really great multitasking feature. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you wanna see how easy it is to set up and use it, watch that video. Now moving on to cameras, I say this all the time in my tablet reviews, but I don't really use the rear facing cameras on my tablet. So I don't personally overvalue that feature. There's just never been a consistent use case where I would use the iPad camera over the one on my phone. Now I know that some people use them to scan documents for that pretty much any recent camera is gonna work. But if you're someone who is planning to take pictures or shoot videos, you're getting a wide 12 megapixel f1.8 camera with a five time digital zoom and smart HDR3 for photos. You can also record 4K at 24, 25, 30 and 60 frames per second, which is great and you can shoot slow motion at 1080p at up to 240 frames per second. For my personal use, the front facing camera is a lot more important. And this is where the iPad Air 4 is behind the rest of the iPads with a seven megapixel F2.2 camera versus every other iPad right now, which has a 12 megapixel camera with center stage. Now, if you haven't seen center stage in action yet, it basically means that the iPad is able to use the ultra wide camera and artificial intelligence to identify a subject and then track it as it moves through the frame. It can then crop in and out to keep the subject properly framed. And it gives you the appearance that the camera is panning or tilting to follow the subject. To me, this is a nice to have feature and not a deal breaker, but if that's a feature that you want, then you'll need to pick up any of the other current iPads. As far as the speakers, the iPad Air 4 is right in the middle of the iPad lineup. It's better than the iPad 9 and the iPad mini 6, and it's not quite as good as the 11 and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro models. We are still getting speakers on both sides, which is really important if you're playing games or if you're watching content in landscape mode. So with something like the iPad 9, you only have speakers on the bottom. So when you're in landscape mode, you only get sound to one side. With the iPad Air 4, there are speakers on both ends so you get stereo sound and just a heads up even though there are four speaker grills there are actually only two speakers and since i mentioned gaming let's talk about it and then we'll get to my recommendations as far as which one i would get for mobile gaming i think the ipad air 4 has been a good option of course it's not as portable as the mini 6 which is quickly becoming my favorite ipad to game on but it's still comfortable to handle and a lot of the times I appreciate the larger display. I've also paired my Xbox controller and used the Air 4 with Xbox Game Pass and it's great to have access to all those games anywhere I go, as long as I have a good internet connection, of course. The speakers have worked well for me and remember that there is no headphone jack, so you either go wireless, use a USB-C headset or get a 3.5 millimeter adapter. All right, so now let's talk about pricing and my recommendations. 
So this was the first iPad that I got that had some fun color choices. And I went with sky blue and keep in mind that the colors are fairly muted. There are two storage options. So if you're looking at the Wi-Fi only model, the 64 gigabyte sells for 599 and the 256 gig sells for 749. I'm using the Apple store pricing, but a lot of times you can find better prices by using the links in a description. And then of course, there are also cellular models, which are an additional 130 bucks. Now, personally, I pretty much never get cellular models of tablets because I have Wi-Fi available pretty much everywhere I go. And when I don't, I can use my phone as a hotspot. So if I had to do it again, I still wouldn't get the cellular model. Now, if you don't have reliable Wi-Fi where you use your iPad or you plan on getting a dedicated data plan for it, then of course it makes sense to get the cellular version, which supports 4G LTE. As far as storage size, I have a bunch of big games installed. I also have LumaFusion, Procreate, Lightroom, and I'm using up about 45 gigabytes of storage. So if you're getting this device to just browse the web, work with general productivity and social media apps, play some games and then stream content, 64 gigabytes should be enough. But if you want a lot of games, if you use apps that take up a lot of storage or you keep photos and videos on your iPad, then you'll want to look at the 256 gig model. Apple provides really good operating system support. And my iPad Air 2 from 2014 is still supported by iPad OS 15. So the iPad Air 4 should easily be able to last me for another five to six years, and I still think it's a great option. Now you should check out my absolute favorite accessories for the iPad Air 4. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.